A few weeks ago, Big Joe released a weird little video poem called The Eggsman of Twitter. I hear the Eggman! In here! In here, Mr. Eggman! I want to talk about what I think it is about. Hi, I'm David. Welcome to YouTube, a literary analysis. In this series, I combine my skills as a literary critic and a person who watches too much YouTube in order to explore videos. Joel is a YouTuber who's been around for a while and has a strong following. In his Big Joel channel, he makes video essays and commentary videos about cultural politics, films, and a variety of other topics. So one month, he might have a video about watching all the Disney sequels, another month a poetic contemplation about the nature of love, and another summarizing a report about the criminal practices of the Minneapolis Police Department. In his uh, newer Little Joel channel, he posts more improvised comments on culture and politics, often stressing some absurdity of how people uh, react online to things. Many have wondered if there's a medium-sized Joel as well. Joel recently announced that he will start posting shorter yet scripted videos on his main channel, taking the energy from Little Joel and funneling in it into the more curated experience of Big Joe. The X-Men of Twitter is a result of this move and one I find quite fascinating. I call it a video poem not just because it's much shorter than the typical video essay or because it expresses emotions, but because it lends itself to a multiplicity of interpretations or readings. The brevity creates gaps, and the gaps leave room for interpretation in ways that video essays don't always allow. I therefore want to offer two readings of the poem. First is that the video is about the frightening and sad schism in American culture. The second is that the video is a commentary, even a parody, of manipulated melancholy on YouTube. What happens in the X-Men of Twitter? Big Joel, our speaker or narrator, tells us of a post he saw complaining about increased food prices. The typical tweet from a Republican man. He digs deeper into the tweet and discovers that the man eats dinners consisting of 20 eggs and that there are pics of these dinners. In the end, he discovers that there are others on Twitter who also eat these huge amounts of eggs. So what does it all mean? Why is the story disturbing and exciting, as Joel says? Why is he haunted by it? Why did Big Joel choose to make this video about a random tweet? One answer I can give is that the tweet and what follows it viscerally communicates a terror or schism in American society where it often feels like conservatives and liberals, Republicans and Democrats do not have any common ground, could not, as it were, sit at the same table. The speaker, Big Joel, we already know from context to be a liberal to leftist to very leftist YouTuber. The video is about his disbelief about the eating habits of someone who is designated as a Republican, but by his accusations that Bidenomics are ruining America, the Eggsman. The Eggsman provides a peek of his food for a week. We are exposed piece by piece to this diet, which contains only animal-based products, mostly highly processed. The crowning jewel is what the narrator calls six dozen eggs. It's actually ten dozen eggs. It is as if Joel cannot even pronounce the full egg quantity. In a literal reading, we don't need for something to be intentional in order to interpret it. Even if it was just an unintentional mistake, the discrepancy between the words and image is meaningful. There's a sense of disbelief at what this conservative man eats. Surely he's buying this many eggs for a massive family or a special occasion. Surely he doesn't mean this is food for a week for him and him alone. Surely he buys other things at other places. See, in contemporary liberal culture, contemporary liberal morality even, there's this idea that one is supposed to eat healthy and that eating healthy includes eating vegetables. 
Most people won't put it exactly like this, but in a way it seems immoral to eat a high cholesterol diet. But this conservative man seems to eat nothing but egg. A reply tweet acts as a stand-in for the speaker and he's mostly liberal to leftist audience. Somebody replied to the man, you eat 17 eggs and 7 ounces of sour cream a day? The reply is clearing. Often, yes, and more. Many pics of what I eat posted on wall. 20 eggs, often my dinner. For the eggs man, it is natural and obvious to eat so many eggs. In the context of the video, this is just who he is. He is the eggs man. I hear the egg man! In here! In here, Mr. Egg Man! You might not agree with me. But I think there's something repulsive about eggs, even more so than dairy products or even meat. The dairy and chicken in the video are already processed, taking, taken two or three steps away from their industrial farm origins. Eggs, perhaps incorrectly, are associated with cholesterol and bad health more than other products. Also, raw eggs are mucus-like and sticky. And listen, there is no way around it. Eggs come out of a chicken's butt. Most of us still eat them, maybe every day, but they are also kind of disgusting, especially in large quantities. But the eggs man just loves them. 20 eggs often my dinner. Joel reads with despair. The eggs man produces pics of the uncooked eggs. There's something aesthetically pleasing or worthy of pride in a bowl of full of 20 raw eggs for the eggs man. This is what the narrator can't understand. There are other people who see these pics, find them enticing, and share their preferences for having 20 boiled eggs for dinner that they associate this outside egg consumption with a social class or group affiliation, blue collar, is shocking and haunting. It makes the split within American culture between the Whole Foods libs and the 10 dozen eggs cons too, too visceral. A chasm no bridge can overcome. Just to be clear, I don't believe all Republicans eat 20 egg dinners, and nor am I suggesting that Joel or his audience believe that, just that this fondness for huge omelets is emblematic of this kind of drifting apart in American culture. This split is sad, and at the end of the day, I think you are meant to sit back and contemplate it. That's one reading, and it can help explain why the Eggsman haunts the narrator in the video. But there is another direction for understanding the video, possibly one contradicting the first. In this one, the haunting is an intentional hyperbole. The reaction is meant to be understood as an exaggeration and even, manipul and even manipulation. I think you can read this video as a comment on the manipulation of sadness in video essays and similar forms. The way I experience the video, it seems like it is trying hard to make you feel sad. Trying so hard that I suspect that uh, Joel is making fun of the ways in which video essays makes us sad. Why do I say that it's going for sadness and why do I think it's a parody? The video is accompanied by Chopin's Nocturne Number no. 3 in B major. Chopin's Nocturne's pieces of music for the nighttime have long been used in media, to, including video essays, to specify sadness. Not just uh, signify it, but make the audience feel this sadness, this melancholy. Using them thus is a cliché. Joel surely knows, surely, surely knows this, and that's why I think it is partly a parody. You cannot use a nocturne as background music in full earnestness this day, these days, even if Joel did choose uh, one of the less common ones. Joel's vocabulary is filled with words that express his own emotions about what he discovers. 
He opens by saying that it disturbed and excited him. He concludes with the, the discoveries haunting him. Joel is sharing his feelings, quite exaggerated ones, for something as small as a man who loves eggs, but also th uh, through his own reactions tries to shape the audience's reaction. It's as if the narrator can't trust the audience to be as disturbed as he was just by the tweets and images. He needs to hammer it in. The ambiguity about the proper reaction to the Eggsman is again part of why I think it's a parody. If the tragedy in the man's diet is obvious, you might not need the drama of revealing its component by one by one while the rest of the screen is black. The flow of information is controlled as to increase the shock. There is a certain exaggeration in drama in this video that makes me think Joel is making fun of someone. So we have a kind of dissonance. On the one hand, there is a certain exaggeration in the video. On the other hand, we know Joel is a very talented creator with good taste. One way to settle this dissonance between these two ideas is to see the video as at least partly a parody. What is he parodying? There is a certain atmosphere video essays sometimes create of sadness at the face of an incomprehensible world. It's an atmosphere or affect that suggests that there is limited things we can do about the issues apart from lament them. This affect is created by manipulating the flow of information, choice of words and tone of voice, and of course putting on melancholy music like Chopin's Nocturnes or Satie's Gymnopédie. See, Joel also sometimes verges on this affect in his videos, especially, uh, especially in his more arty videos like Three Stories at the End of the World. If this is a parody, it's a self-parody as much as a parody of anyone else. Parodying this mood can help us be more aware of manipulations of melancholy in the content we consume. Noticing this affect in particular might be important because there's something disempowering about it. A melancholy mood in face of the outrageous facts of the world can lend itself to giving up on changing the world. It's important to notice when video makers slip into this tone, often at the end of videos, and ask if indeed this sadness needs to mean giving up. To sum up, Big Joe's little video poem can be understood as expressing sadness or parodying it. Its shortness in many ways is exactly what opens it up to a multiplicity of readings. I really hope that Joel and others continue to experiment with this kind of very short video essayistic production. A brief video informed by the tools developed in long-form video essays can be very, very powerful. Let me know what you think I got right, what you think I got wrong. Let me know if you have any questions. As usual, if you think I made something simple, more complicated, that's fine. Sometimes that's my job too. Thank you for listening.